In today's video, I want to speak about how to connect with God in a deeper relationship. Connecting with God in a deeper level does not happen on the surface. It actually happens in the deep. And you can't get to the deep with God without you seeking Him. The Bible says, and you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Which is when you look for me with your whole heart. It is a mark and sign of great intelligence and wisdom to seek out for God. In Psalms, we see that as scripture says, the Lord looks down from heaven on the entire human race. He looks to see if anyone is truly wise, if anyone seeks God. This scripture already makes us to know that seeking God is something that a wise person does. And what is this seeking God? It is you coming to a place of worshipping God, reverencing God in all your ways. I've done a video on how to be a true worshipper before you can check it out on the card above. And scripture says that God is looking down as if someone is looking through his window to see, is there anyone seeking me? Is there anyone wise? Because without us seeking God, we cannot connect with him in a deeper relationship. God is like, I am here. But if you don't look for me, you can't find me. If you look for me, you're going to find me. Point one, have the posture of pursuit. In a world where everybody is trying to pursue after an ambition, a goal, relevance, fame, and whatsoever thing, you should be someone that is pursuing after God. Your posture should be a posture of pursuit of God. You're not seeking God for what you can get from Him, but you are seeking Him to get Him. Because God is truly looking out for people who seek Him without bias, without having underlying motives who are like, I need God so that God can do this for me. If I am to need a miracle, I know who has the miracle. But do I go to God just for the miracle? I need a breakthrough. So I only go to God because I need the breakthrough. That means I am not being sincere. I'm being biased. I don't really need God. I need what he has. When you echo the song, I need thee, oh I need thee. Every heart I need thee, oh bless me now my Savior, I come to thee. Is it with the mindset of God being your quick response? Not as if it's a bad thing for you to take God as a quick response because scripture says that he is the nearest helper in times of trouble. But it would be wrong that you are only seeking God when you get into trouble. And I will put it to you that if you are only seeking God when you get in trouble, that is the reason that you get in trouble in the first place. Because if you were to seek God for himself, you will elude some trouble and evil that would come to you. Why? Because God would put you in the right place at the right time, such that when trouble is coming, he will make you escape such and you stay in a place of safety. Paul said in Philippians that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And he went on to say, I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. What is he trying to say here? He's saying my posture is that of pursuit of God. Is that of pursuit of why Christ got hold of me. That is what I want. I want the will of God for my life. I want to keep progressing with God. I want to press on for the price of the high calling of Jesus Christ. I want to press on for why God invited me to come work with him. And if that is your number one goal, then every other thing in your life will fall into place. Because the Bible says that you should Set your affection towards the things above and not the earthly things because you were called out from these earthly inclinations to live a life that honors your father. And then I came to this revelation that I love the fact that God is a mystery. Why do I love this? God being a mystery helps me to be hungry for more of him. I will always come to a place of needing him. And when I need him, I will always seek him to find him. Because he is available for me to find him anytime I seek him. And how mysterious God is keeps us on our feet to keep searching for him. To be in a posture of pursuit of him. To get more of him because there's so much of him that we cannot even get enough. Number two, recognize your seal as a Christian. When you believed in Jesus as you hate the word of God, the Bible says that you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit was the first thing that heaven installed in you as a believer, in you and I. Just like someone would have a device and you install your antivirus so that it can screen and scan everything that will come into the phone, 
the Holy Spirit has been installed in you as a seal. What is this seal about? He is our seal to preserve and to secure us for the redemption, the final redemption of our body. That is why we need him in this time. Jesus was always telling the disciples, I need to go so that the comforter will come. Because if I do not go, the comforter will not come. And when he went, he sent us this comforter that when we believe in Jesus, we receive him as a seal on us. Scripture says in Ephesians, In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of the promise, who is a first installment of our inheritance in regard to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. And again, it said in chapter 4 verse 30, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is your seal to identify you as God's own in this world. And if you don't recognize him as your seal and live in sync with him, you are going to cheat yourself. Because you're not going to amass all that God has for you right here and right now. This is the very reason the scripture tells us when we are fearful that God did not give you the spirit to fear, to be coward, but he gave you the spirit of power, of might, the spirit of wisdom, of sound mind. And if you don't walk in sync with this spirit, how are you going to connect with God in a deeper fellowship? God knew that you accepting to walk with Jesus will not be easy. He knew you will face temptations. He knew so many things will come to you and he said, I will give you a comforter. I will seal you so that you'll be preserved. But what could happen if you forsake your seal as a believer? You'll be disconnected. And God forbid that you should be in such a place. Even Jesus, the son of God, when he was tempted, he was led by the spirit into the wilderness, which is he was not alone. He had the Holy Spirit with him. Thereby, he was able to overcome that temptation. And if you want to walk in life without recognizing that you shouldn't walk alone, that you have the Holy Spirit of God who is readily with you, you are going to do yourself a disservice because this Holy Spirit was given to be with you, to walk with you, to go with you wherever. This is your mobile presence. He is not limited to a particular room, a particular space, a particular place. He is with you always, but you need to recognize and walk in sync with him so that you can hear his voice. But the comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to replace me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall, will remind you of, bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. I would like you to come to this understanding that when you are coming to God to talk to him, to pray to him, to ask of him, you're not coming to invoke God as if you are to summon God. No, he is just an invitation away. He doesn't need to be invoked because he cannot be invoked outside of his will. You can only invoke spirits and other things, but God is invited into a space that he wants to get into and he loves to be with you and all you need is to know that if you invite him he is just an invitation away when you are tempted holy spirit my helper help me when you are in trouble holy spirit my counselor counsel me when you need help holy spirit my advocate i don't know what to do here holy spirit my comforter comfort me holy spirit my standby I know you are with me in this place. When you are weak, Holy Spirit, my strengthener, strengthen me. You have this mobile help. You need to start functioning and working in him. And Jesus said here that this comforter will teach us all things and he will bring us to remembrance of the things that he has already said. I don't know if you have experienced it before that sometimes scripture just comes to your mind at the exact time that you needed it. Maybe you wait to be tempted and the scripture lightens up in your mind. That is the Holy Spirit putting in remembrance of God's word to make you know, I am here as your seal. You don't need to do that. And he is to convict you, not to condemn you. To show you the way to lead you lovingly to a place of safety. Lastly, go after God's heart. The Bible calls David a man after God's own heart. And I know that has brought about a lot of arguments around like, why would God call David? 
A man after his own heart, someone that wasn't perfect. How would he be a man after God's own heart? The only man after God's own heart. No, calm down. When the Bible says a man after God's own heart, how do you understand it first of all? When you look at David's life, he was not a perfect person, but he loved God and he was loved of God. But one thing about him was that he sought to know God's heart. He sought to please God. He sought to do God's will. And that was what made him a man after God's own heart. So in today's society, you and I can be a man, a woman, a boy, a girl, a child, a human being after God's own heart, which is we are seeking after God. We are longing after God. We are going after God. We need more of God. We are pursuing God. And that is what it means to be a man after, a man that runs after God. That is why when you read the Psalms, you can see David's communication with God. He said in Psalms 27, the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. Again, in verse 8, he said, When you said, Seek my face, my heart said to you, I shall seek your face, Lord. This is beautiful. This is a man that his heart yearns for God. This is a man that is hard yearns to do God's will. And that is how you can go after God's heart. So to that I'll say this. The man after God's own heart is not a title given to perfect Christians who are like holier than that. Or, oh, this is a man after God's own heart. He's a pastor. He's an apostle. He's a bishop. Because God knows every heart that seeks for him. God knows every heart that longs for him. God knows every person that lives to revere him worship him in all aspects of their life not just with the fruit of their lips but with the fruit of their life so the man after god's own heart is not a medal to wear neither is he a tack to put on your clothes or something to write on your t-shirt a man after god's own heart it is a posture it is a longing to seek after god that is what makes you a man after god's heart and it is said of david in acts chapter 13 but god removed saul and replaced him with david a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Now note that last line. That is what describes what it means to be the man after God's own heart. And this is in direct contrast to Saul as a king who refused to obey God. So God told Samuel, I have found a man after my own heart, a man that longs to do my will. That is where this came from. Which is to say the man after God's own heart was not something that was just reserved for David and David alone. Such that now we can use it as a yardstick if the man after God's own heart could sleep with somebody's wife and do this and do that. So who am I? No, you can't use that. The man after God's own heart, it is just a posture of the heart that David had. And you can have such a heart too. To love God's heart. That doesn't mean you are perfect. But God longs for you to have a pure heart. And you can only have this pure heart by seeking after God. The Bible says God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God is not calling you because you have a perfect heart. God is not calling you because you are the perfect one. God is calling you because he knows the more you seek him, your heart will be changed and your heart will become purer than it is right now. So the more you go after God, seeking for the washing of the water by the word of God, which is what the word of God does to cleanse your heart from all its impurities, from the perversions, from the wrong mindsets, from the wrong mentalities, from the wrong ideasms that you've picked up from birth, from everything that wasn't supposed to be. God transforming your heart makes your heart come to a place of purity. And then this is where you can see God. And God wants you to come to this place so that you can have a close and deeper connection with Him. Who may climb the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies, they will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O God of Jacob. And again, it said in Lamentations, the Lord is good to those who await him, to the soul who seeks him. I hope you found value in this video. I am Uwe and this is my YouTube channel. Thank you. God bless you.